Hello everyone and welcome to Heart and Hand Extra, the second weekly free show here from Heart and Hand. Now normally on this show we look back at what's happened this week and look ahead to Saturday or Sunday's match. And uh, this week there will be a slightly shorter show because we don't really have an awful lot to look back on. But joining me to look forward anyway is a man who has actually seen our opponents this weekend in the flesh. So with the scouting report is Mr David Marshall. Hello David. How you doing David? I am not too bad, not too bad. Now, International Week, not an awful lot to report, especially as in the latter fixtures there wasn't an awful lot of Rangers involvement. Alan McGregor, of course, played for Scotland in their victory over Albania. Ryan Jack didn't come on. Um, Alfredo Morelos didn't come on for Colombia against Argentina. And uh, probably to his relief, Borna Barisic didn't come on in Croatia's rather dismal 6 0 mm. destruction by Spain. So. A bit disappointing, you know, from that point of view, but equally for both Barisic and for uh, for Alfredo Morelos, the experience and the confidence boost, hopefully, that they'll receive from getting their first cap is something that was worth the two weeks. I'd say so. I mean, it's good for them. They're also two guys that want to play for their country. You've seen the, the video of Alfie's village in Colombia, everyone coming out to watch him get his first cap. Okay. I mean... Things like that, we can we can, we can be a bit apathetic towards the national side in this country, but you can see a further field certainly in the South American countries. That means so so much to them. So that's that's wonderful to see. It's good for us as well, David, now because we have got two full uh, a full Colombian international and a full Croatian yeah. international in our wings now. So that's just good news for us. It's also good in terms of attracting players. I mean, obviously not at this moment, but down the line, because mm-hmm. it is a concern. You mentioned it there, and because maybe we are a little bit more blasé about it in Scotland, about international football, it's still the be-all and end-all for a lot of countries. It's still absolutely what everyone um, aspires to and looks forward to. So if we can say to people, it, look, demonstrably it doesn't harm your career to play in Scotland. Look, here is, you know... A guy who's just been capped by the World Cup finalists. Here is a guy who's in the Colombia national side. That's beneficial. And look, when you're in a league that we're in and you have the financial constraints, every advantage when it comes to finding a player is worth getting. Absolutely as well. And as well, David, it just shows the progress we'll continue to make. When we first came up uh, under Mark Robton, the idea of having... You know, a guy playing for the World Cup finalists mere months after they win the final was, you know, buying this guy. Uh, having a player in the Colombian side as well was just unthinkable as well. We've now got both of that. It's great, as you say, in terms of going forward, we'll be able to attract guys saying, look, come to us. It doesn't mean your international career has to suffer. We've got the proof here to show you that it won't. It's just all around good news for the guys involved and for us. To Ibrox then, or rather to the Hummel Training Centre, where we saw some players returning to training that we hadn't seen, um, either before in one case or um, for, a, for a while. First of all, the new guy was Eros Grejda, who of course was uh, sent home from the Albania squad. He wasn't match fit. Uh, we, I think the papers here reported it as perhaps a lingering concern, but he, he was able to train. It was just simply he hasn't played for a few months. And mm. the Albania coach, Christian Panucci, said, well, you know, it wouldn't be fair to, to throw him in. He's, he's not up to it yet. Which also has implications for Rangers because it may mean he might require a bit of training time. He, he clearly hasn't had a, a pre-season and will need to be to be brought in gently, you know, with under-20s games and whatnot. Um, the other three, in fact, are two long-termers and one, um, it's felt like a long-term, but it, it hasn't been. That's heart and hands on Lasana Koulibaly, who is in contention to, to play on Saturday. But the other two, quite interestingly, were Jordan Rossiter, I know, well, you may have a faint sense of deja vu here, and uh, Graham Dorans. And the manager, I think, has been more upbeat about the chances of seeing Dorans soon, which was a bit of a surprise. But we'll, we'll take them all individually then, David. First of all, Grejda, a new signing. We're all obviously excited. £2 million, pounds, a winger um, with a, a good reputation and, and standing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it might be a case of just nursing him back in because he is a, a permanent signing. He's a long-term project, clearly. There's no point rushing him into the side for him to maybe make a bad first impression. And that can colour your stay at a club. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I think uh, patience is going to be needed with this guy. I'm quite excited to see him too. But as you said, he's got no pre-season. He's coming back from a from a long term injury. He's just had not had the game time. We might not see the best of this guy when you 
taking to the fact as well, he's going to be nice to get used to playing into a new league and a new country. We might not see the best of this guy until maybe maybe January, maybe as late as that, you know. But the important thing is, if he does does start showing up, we need to give him that time, that patience, because he is a long term signing. So we might not see the best of him uh, this season. But if we get him to a point where he's match fit again, he starts hitting hitting the road run in the second half of the season, then we get best on uh, next season, then, you know, we need to have that little bit of further planning in our mind when it comes to this guy. Yeah, and it is difficult because it's, you know, we're like kids. It's like, oh, new toy. And, oh, yeah. Know, we want to, you know, we want to, to see it in action. But uh, you're right, it does. It requires a wee bit of patience from the fan, uh, from the fan base, which, you know, only can be granted with wins. That's that's the way to that's the way to get people on side. Rossiter, We've been here before, we know the script. Um, I'm at the stage now with Jordan Rossiter that if we see him, great, but I'm not counting on it. I just think it's there's been too many injuries too often, too many setbacks too often, that, yep, it's great, but I'm not going to be waiting on it with bated breath. Um, I think if, if we see him and we get anything out of him, that's great. Because so often we see him, he looks... Well, you think, wow, this this boy's a talent, and then we don't see him for months. So, I don't think you can plan to have him. And I think David, that the manager, judging by his comments in the summer, may have and may have felt right. Okay, well, you know, he's over the worst of it. I know him; he's going to be a key player for me. And is maybe now, I've noticed from his his language, is a little bit more cautious on Jordan Ross. I wonder if now having been in and around the club and saw the reports and whatnot, he's maybe thinking, OK, you know, if we get anything out of this this guy, great, but you, you can't plan for it. You just can't. I, I continually forget that Jordan was still a Rangers player, I'll be honest with you. Um, I've organised a video with a couple of mates. We're going to St John's game and going out after it and a couple of them have been talking in our group chat and saying, taking bets to if Ross Hart will be injured before that game against the Johnston comes around. I like you, David. I've, I'm, I don't want to say I've washed my hands with the guy, but I just don't expect to see anything from him in the Rangers jersey. I just hope for his case that he is past his, uh, past his injuries. If we get the, the benefit of that, Rangers, yeah, great. If it means he can go and have a career elsewhere, then that's good for him as well. I just, I, I just don't put any expectation on the guy now. Yeah, and you're absolutely right because it's not his fault. You wish him nothing no. but the best. The guy's had horrendous luck with injuries. Um, from a Rangers point of view, you have to say, well, we can't plan around him. But from a human point of view, oh God, absolutely. You are just desperate to see him get a run, get a, a, from now to the end of the season and get playing. Mm-hmm. Because, it mu- I mean, the mental strength it must take for the guy to get up and keep trying is huge and honestly he's got nothing but my admiration as I say on a human level it's just frustrating from a, a Rangers fan level because he's so talented and it wouldn't be the case you know if he was rubbish we probably wouldn't bother that much but it always seems to be talented ones like uh, that, that this this thing happened to unfortunately it's always the, the way of it Graham Dorans uh, is an interesting one because I think at the start of the season there were some ominous noises about him uh, on the rumour mill just that but he is back training and, you know, he he could be an option for us. Uh, I think you've got a manager there who has a much clearer plan of what he wants a team to do. And therefore, I think we'll have a much clearer role in his mind for Graham Dorans. Now, it's up to Graham Dorans to come in and either do that or not. But in a way, that's a simpler challenge for a footballer. I felt last season, at times, Graham Dorans was a little bit of a square peg in a round hole where I'm not quite sure the management at the time last season when he was fit really knew what to do with him and Mm -hmm. they didn't quite know is he an attacking midfielder is he a holding what are we going to do with him and I think he struggled to make an impact because of that he was I thought before his first injury he was looking as though he was just starting to settle and show what he's capable of so I'm really hopeful am I being naive there? Eh, I don't know, David. I'll be honest with you. I I didn't think we'd see uh, Dorans again in the Rangers jersey. I just didn't think he'd play for us. When he first signed, I I don't know if we got the player that we thought we were getting in Graham Dorans. I think a lot of people, uh, myself probably including that, thought we were getting a a box-to-box midfielder-type player. And I don't know if it's just you know time catching up with him. I don't think that's the player we had last season. 
there is, of course, your argument about um, the coaching system that was in and around him as well. Wasn't to his benefit, wasn't to MD's benefit in the team last year, to be fair. But this is a guy who's getting on there in age and football terms. He's come back for a serious injury. I don't know what, what type of player we're getting back here. I don't know what he's going to lose through this injury. You talk about being an option in our body. I just think that's all he is now. And just someday, if we need to, if we need to put something in there, he's going to be that guy. I'm maybe being, as I say, hopelessly optimistic and naive. And I agree, he's not the player, perhaps, that we had in our heads because of age and injury. That can happen. Um, mm-hmm. But I still think he's talented. He's a decent passer of the ball. And I think he could fit in because I, I like the fact that the manager gives you a specific role. Again, his fitness will, will have to be tip top because to play in our midfield, you're expected to do a shift every match and nobody is allowed to do that. So yep. nobody's allowed to coast. You've got to get in there and do the shift. The manager, it's his basic expectation. It's quite clear. He expects work as a prerequisite. So, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see if we get them back. Someone we have missed, and I don't think that's arguable, and who is on the cusp of a first-team return. So let's let's switch focus to Saturday's match against Dundee is none other than Hart and, Hone, Hart and Hand's own Lasana Koulibaly, who, of course, has been out, uh, been out since a tackle by one of your Paisley people. I hope you're proud of your, <laughs> hope you're proud of your town, Marshall. Um, Stephen McGinn, and has been missing for a number of weeks. Now, we've really missed his presence in midfield, particularly uh, at Parkhead, and particularly, although we got away with it, in, in Russia. He was really showing up very well as being the type of player we haven't had for too long, which is a guy in midfield who can break up everything and just dominate play. And even though he'd only been here a short while, I think the fans already could see not only what a good player he was, but what an important player he was for us in the way that we play. Well, firstly, I wouldn't be Paisley Rose if I didn't point out the McGinns are actually from Clyde Bank, so... Fair point. Does that? Does that? Um, yeah. Uh, when I was talking about patience with uh, Grester, um, when it comes to Killer Valley coming back for his injury, um, fuck that. Give me, give me, give me. Get him back in that team. <laughs> you're, you're so right. We've missed him. We needed somebody in there to do the dirty work, break up play. Um, I think if we had him in there for the old thumb game, it could have been a much different game. For one, he wouldn't have let Scott Brown strut around the place and pretend he's a footballer. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, we have missed in the last couple of weeks. Uh, he'll make a massive difference to our midfield. Hopefully this injury's got, it's not going to be one of these pain in the nagging ones that are going to be a car. He's a guy that when he's in there just adds so much more to us. Oh yeah, totally. And uh, it'll be great to see him back for for Saturday. No fresh injury worries from the international break that we've been aware of, although the press conference for the game will take place tomorrow. Uh, somewhat surprisingly, it's usually the Thursday, but uh, for, for whatever reason this week it's going to be tomorrow. And, uh, you know, from a, a perspective then of what we can expect, Dundee managed, of course, by favourite son Neil McCann, but things not been going well for them. They've had a very poor start to the season and have uh, recently brought in another uh, ex-ranger in Kenny Miller. Mm. So, Dundee have not been doing particularly well, although they did see off a St Mirren manager, David. Uh, yeah, I suppose after they lost to said St Mirren manager on the first day of the season. Do you know, I, I don't think I'm sticking my neck on the line here too much by saying that I think right now, for what we've got to judge on, Dundee are the worst team in the league. Um, St Mirren, um, a lot of people say it would probably be if they were going to argue and say, no, I think St Mirren are worse than Dundee, which I'd, I'd, struggle hard, uh, I'd struggle to argue against other than the fact that St Mirren under Alan Stubbs bet Dundee, so I think that tells you what you need to know there. Uh, they'll be an unknown quantity. Don't know what Owen Kearney's going to bring there. Um, a manager coming into a new league. What will happen to them will happen. Dundee have been staggering like poor, however, David. Um, four games in the league, four defeats, only scored two goals in a Scottish League Cup defeat to um, Air United as well, 3-0 in, at Dundee. So that shows you all they need to know there. When I watched them, when they played uh, against St Mirren, that was a funny game. Uh, St Mirren started really well. They scored quite early on. Then Dundee came back into it, scored halfway through the first half to equalise. Then pretty much dominated the game throughout. Uh, won a penalty early in the second half, missed it, and then totally fell out of the game. Let St Mirren come back into it. Uh, St Mirren 
scored their only chance really the second half. The Dundee goalkeeper presented it on a plate. Jack Hamilton allowed St Martin to score and for there Dundee just they looked sorry for self. They looked like they didn't know how to get back into the game. They didn't know how they were losing this game. They could have easily have been two or three goals up. They were behind and just haven't seen any ideas how to get back into it. They've lost uh, Stephen Colker as well. For all you can say about him, that's going to be a massive loss for them as well. For for the sake of our Rangers' point of view, David, I think this is going to be very straightforward for us. There's really no excuse for it not to be, and you've spelled out the reasons why there. Dundee's form has been extremely poor. They travelled to Rangers last season, or Tybrox last season, and, and lost 4-1 twice. And even the second game in particular, Rangers didn't play well at all, mm. um, and still won comfortably. And Rangers are a significantly better side. Kenny Miller, of course, scored in the second game. Um, Rangers are a significantly better side now than they were last season. And and you're right. I mean, there is absolutely no excuse if Rangers approach this game correctly that we shouldn't win and win it comfortably. And Kenny Miller returning to Ibrox. I mean, there's there's the narrative for for the newspapers. That's that's what they'll pick up mm. on. And. Uh, I think he'll get a decent reaction from a lot of the support. I think he was a guy that divided opinion, it's fair to say. But I think that he had a lot of fans in the support. I don't think it was ever uniform that that people didn't like him. I think he won over a lot of fans in his, his second and third spells. And I would expect him to get a decent reaction from the Rangers supporters. If you look at Chris Boyd, he tends to get a good one as well. And I mm-hmm. think that... I'd be surprised if he didn't get a decent reception. I, I'm not saying it'll be universal. I'm not saying it'll be 100. percent I'm just saying I wouldn't expect it to be vitriolic. Uh, no, I think uh, overall he will get a decent reaction. I have been seeing myself on Twitter some people um, talking about how the thought of Kenny Miller coming to Ibrox and getting applauded makes him sick. To be perfectly honest, David, I, I'm bored of Kenny Miller. I'm completely bored of the guy. Uh, I've got no real interest in what he wants to say. I've got no real interest in what he's doing with his playing career now. He's there with the best of luck to him. His, his team's going to get beaten Saturday and that's all I'm interested in. Yeah, me too. Now, <laughs> Rangers have been toying a little bit with formations. We've seen the 3-5-2. I think we'll see it again because we've signed two centre-backs, which would make you suspect that it will be something that we see again. But I'm not sure we'll see it Saturday. I think we'll be more likely to see the, the 4-3-3. And again, you know, there was a lot of players away, but there were a lot who weren't. So the managers had that two weeks to drill with a lot of players, and, and that can be invaluable at this time of the season, Dave. Mm-hmm. I think it's an interesting point, David, because you look at on paper a home game against uh, the bottom league team, Dundee at Ibrox, you think that might be the time to test out a new formation or a new way of Yeah, home I, would, I would say more so than for Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think he will though, and I agree you for um, a couple of reasons. One, we're just coming off the back of uh, an old firm defeat. That was our last result, so we want to get a win first and foremost. And as well, we're going to go into a run of games here that we should be expected to win every single one. The next five games, we should be expected to win. So I think, first and foremost, Gerard will be wanting to set a president. Let's go out there. Let's get a good win. Let's get a few goals. Really, I'm expecting us to have this game killed off within half an hour, David, to be honest. Just go out there, get the business done, and then maybe in the next coming weeks when we've got a couple more home games that we can start tinkering with things a little bit more. We've been talking about the start and five points out of nine, and uh, a few people have been upset about that. And I've defended it because I said you need to uh, five points out of twelve. Sorry, I think you need to look at the the context of the matches in Europe and whatnot. But you're absolutely right when you say this run of fixtures coming up. There's none of that. Go out and win these. I'm expecting fifteen points from the next five matches. End of story. And that is the challenge for the team now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm in pretty much the same boat as you, David. I'm not particularly happy with the domestic start in the league. I can understand it. For me, I'm thinking, basically, the league season starts here. No more excuses. No more fuck-ups. We need to go out there. We need to get make sure these routine wins are routine. We need to start winning. And if we get through these next five games and then get five victories, then we can start looking ahead and planning for the harder games that are going to come. So how do you see the the match going then, David? Let's cut to the prediction chase. Uh, As I said, fairly easy. I expect a good performance, expect a few goals. I'm going to go for 4-0 Rangers. I will back David up on that 4-0, which I believe you can get at 11-1 because I'm on it. (laughs) 
I'm ready. So uh, if you, I've gone for a, a build a bet with four nil. Uh, most goals to come in the second half. I think will be one nil up at half time, and then uh, batter them in the second. And James Tavernier to score any time because I think you'll get a penalty. Mm. That, that's sixty six to one. My build a bet. So five are on that, and if it comes up, the drinks are on me. Because uh, that would be very pleasant. I'll hold you to that. Yeah, no, absolutely. But it's it's, uh, (laughs) 4 0 is, in fact, uh, my prediction. So there you go, folks. A a universal, uh, the word of the day, uh, (laughs) round of 4 0s from us here on Heart and Hand. Okay, then, folks. uh, Like I say, a shorter show today. We're back to normal now that the the accursed international weekends are over and there'll be plenty to talk about moving forward. Uh, Before we go, we'd just like to have a a quick plug for our tat shop, which uh, you can find at heartandhand.co.uk our website and if you go there into the section marked shop you'll find all manner of Heart and Hand branded shite from t-shirts to mugs to key rings to phone covers if you want to let the people know that you listen to a slightly camp podcast um, about Rangers then here is your opportunity um, please remember that all the money we make from it goes to me and I'll spend it on things and yeah uh, I think that I'm never going to lie to you in terms of our advertising. You don't need any of this stuff whatsoever. It's purely an indulgence, and it funds the lifestyle of a of a sort of happy-go-lucky hermit based in Ayrshire. So with that, that's heartland.co.uk. Uh, shop, go to that, and have a look, and please buy some tat. Okay, thank you very much to our producers in London, Mr. Mike Lee and Paul Myers, and thank you to my guest today, the lovely Mr. David Marshall. Pleasure as always. Uh, David, where can the the people here read find more about you? Uh, oh, uh, read me on heartandhand.co.uk. I'll be blogging there this week uh, on the Patreon site. Uh, yeah, I've had a bit of a mixed schedule this week. This week, the so far I've got up this week in Rangers history, where I go back through the archives and list some important matches and moments uh, from Rangers history in the corresponding week that we're in. Uh, find me on Twitter at MarshallDavid38 where you can find all my other media stuff like my match report from this Sunday's Old Fun Game up on the official site. Yes, so thank you very much for joining us folks. We will be back Monday and fingers crossed we're celebrating a rampant Rangers victory. Till then, take care. Cheers, bye.